Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin. I'm your host and thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, a couple days ago, uh, we talked about my top video, Psychopaths vs. Sociopaths, reaching one quarter million views. And I'm really excited about that. Thank you so much for all your support, everyone out there. Um, and I thought we'd talk a little bit about the Psychopath Test. Posted a video on that. People really seem to like it. And they wanted me to talk a little bit more about Psychopaths and Sociopaths. So the other day I talked about narcissism. And today I'm going to talk about some stories surrounding Psychopaths and Sociopaths. Um, first things first, I think it's important to acknowledge that the video I did a year ago, a little over a year ago, um, is not exactly perfect. Now, um, colloquially, which is you know how people commonly speak about psychopaths and sociopaths, there's a little bit of a difference. Psychopaths are usually uh, people who are born as twisted, and a sociopath is just someone who um, sort of learned to through sort of a nature versus nurture that things happened to them that made them say, you know what, I don't care about others, I don't care about uh, my emotions, and they get a really twisted sense of emotions. But that's not completely true. Um, the problem with, with psychology in general is that while it's becoming a harder science with brain scans and things like that, it is still a soft science in terms of a lot of the results uh, and things like that are subjective and open to interpretation. And some, some psychologists might argue that there is a difference between psych, uh, psychopaths and sociopaths. Uh, and others might say there's no difference at all. Some might say there's such a thing as psychopathy and others might say um, there's no such thing as psychopathy at all, that people just have different senses of morality. Um, and it's all over the place. So, in order to diagnose some of these things, we have to turn to something called the DSM-5. And I've said a couple of times that the reason why we have these labels in the first place is so that psychologists and, um, psychologists and pharmacists can communicate with each other uh, in order to diagnose and medicate people with certain conditions. And we look to the DSM-5, which is published by the American Psychiatric or Psychological Association, one of the two, in order to diagnose people. So the DSM-5, it's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. And this is the fifth installment. They update things, they add things, they um, revise things as they see fit. But here's the thing, it's just from the association. So you have a lot of different psychologists who have come together and agree that this is how we should label people. Um, and not all psychologists will agree, but it's you know the most united opinion we have on the subject. So it's usually the best place to turn uh, as of right now. So a psychopath is a person suffering from chronic mental disorder, which is abnormal or violent social behavior. So there's sort of a a lot of things you might look to, uh, including a complete and utter lack of empathy, um, maybe violence, maybe not. So when we think about psychopaths, there's usually um, a sort of twisted demonic thing that is going on with these people. But we have everyday psychopaths as well, people who just don't necessarily feel the same way that other people do. They have twisted empathy, they don't really care for other people, they can see someone getting stabbed on the street, completely walk past and feel fine. That is sort of a everyday psychopath, and that's not what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about some of the most horrible, violent social behavior we've ever seen, which is, I, I don't know if they get off on, uh, like sexually, if they get off on, you know, sort of a BDSM, a, a Satanist sort of sort of thing, or if it, it they just feel dead, like a, a sort of um, Dexter from the show, the TV show Dexter, where they feel dead unless they are killing and torturing, that that makes them feel as if they have some sort of emotions that makes them feel alive. So, the first person we're going to talk about is Jeffrey Dahmer. Now, Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested for his psychopathic ways, but he was arrested by the police after uh, he had captured, killed, tortured, and raped 15 young men. Uh, and he would take these men, he would rape them, he would, alive or dead, store them in containers of acid just to, just to watch them slowly dissolve and be tortured. Um, he would rip off their arms, um, eat their arms, their flesh, their organs, uh, and was thus a cannibal. And um, we found out he wasn't, 
he wasn't clinically insane. He wasn't doing these things because he had no idea what he was doing. He fully understood what he was doing. He was declared as sane, uh, which means psychopaths aren't technically insane. They're just extremely twisted, and in this case, in the case of all these people, uh, extremely dangerous. So, anyways, we got Jeffrey Dahmer there, Ted Bundy, um, and these are two of the most obvious situations. Uh, Ted Bundy was kind of uh, narcissistic. He was very good looking. Uh, he had an attractive personality. And psychopaths don't have to be these sort of dregs of society. They can be um, very manipulative in a suave, sophisticated, sort of charismatic way. Um, and so he attracted 30 different women to him. Uh, and we know there are probably 30. There might have been more, though. Um, and he killed all of them. Just absolutely horrific murders, and he would sort of seduce them, bring them in with his charisma and his suave personality, and just murder the crap out of them, um, tortured their bodies, and then, and then had sex with their dead bodies. So not as only as a psychopath, but he's a necrophiliac, and uh, he liked doing it while their bodies were rotting. Not freshly dead, but rotting. These people are gross. I'm just going through a list of terrible people here. Um, Here's an interesting one, uh, because a lot of us like to think that people in the medical profession or whatever, people in any positions of power are very trustable. Not so in this case. Uh, Joseph Mengel was a doctor by profession, um, and he's actually commonly referred to as the angel of death. He was a Nazi, and he, he was in charge of killing people who he thought were unfit for labor. So he had a, a big big role that he played in all sorts of different medical experiments to learn more, you know, scientifically. And he had that sort of mad scientist thing going on where it's all in the pursuit of science so we can torture people, we can do experiments on them, um, and if they're unfit to work that's great. So, some of them were going to throw into fires and uh, gas and others were just going to torture open up, uh, see what they can handle psychologically, psychologically torture them, uh, see what happens if we do this to their body, make them take these sorts of drugs and whatever, and it was just horrific. Um, obviously, the Nazis have a bad rap all over, not saying there's a good way to look at, you know, the Nazi party, um, but I'm saying not all doctors, it's not like this is just an everyday doctor, this was very specifically a Nazi doctor. Um, and let's be honest, Hitler probably had to hire people up in his ranks that were relatively psychopathic to begin with to do some of the things he needed them to do. Um, all right, Albert Fish. He's known as the Boogeyman, the Brooklyn Vampire, and the Moon Maniac. And that's because he was a sadist. And he sexually assaulted young men for 20 years uh, before that got old for him. Raping young men and little boys got old for him, and eventually he just went on killing sprees. So, he is what is referred to as a sadomasochist, which means uh, he gets pleasure from killing people. And like I talked about earlier, not all psychopaths are going to behave in this way. There are common psychopaths, so just because you know someone who might fit the psychopath thing, that doesn't necessarily mean they're terrible people. Albert Fish... You know, Jeffrey Dahmer, terrible people. Absolutely terrible. So, let's pick one more story here. Just going through here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The funny thing is, it has so much to do with rape. Um, and rape in the most twisted possible ways. It's not just like, oh, I raped someone, which I'm not saying downplaying that. It's still horrible, but... All right, and this one's interesting, uh, just from a historical standpoint. The Hart brothers um, were the first serial killers in America. Uh, they began their killing spree when they um, they cut uh, they, they killed a man, cut him open, and filled his body with rocks, and then threw him into a river, which is an extremely brutal yet kind of effective way to cover up a murder. Um, uh, and it was just sort of right off, right off the bat. It was very impulsive that they decided to do this. Um, and some serial killers behave in that way. 
But the Hart brothers specifically, they um, they were the first serial killers. And I think I think it's important to acknowledge in a, in a modern day that politically, a lot of stuff gets thrown at people uh, for. A lot of stuff gets thrown at people for murdering with guns or being, you know, absolutely horrific. And I, I think that's a really loaded topic. But these people kill with knives. They kill with acid. They kill with their charisma. And bad people are out there. And they are twisted. And they are horrible. Not all psychopaths are like that. But these ones particularly are. So I hope you enjoyed some of these terrible, terrible stories. Um... And if you want to look into them, you'll know the names. I'll post the names in the description below. And you can do some more research on their stories. I would go more into them. And if you want, I could do like long stories on these people. But I'm already at 11 minutes. And that was just a really quick glance over on five stories. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And that may be the last of the Psychopath videos for now. I'll probably jump back into the Myers-Briggs thing. That's a lot of fun for me. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you in a couple days.